Hey guys, it's Nate with PlayYourCourt.com, and today we're talking about cracking the whip on the serve, the last serve drill you may ever need. All right, cracking the whip on the serve. This is a good one today, guys. I'm excited to share it with you. This video is for player court members with a rating of 80 and below. If you're not familiar with our rating system, please check out our platform where there's a challenge league, and we're gonna link you with practice partners of the same skill level. Cracking the whip on the serve, guys. We're gonna jump right into this. I'm gonna show you a tool that you can make at home, super easy, and it's gonna show us the critical swing path, and most importantly, the racket drop on the serve. One of the biggest issues that we find on the serve is that too many of us are using the racket in the arm as if it's a stick and not a bull whip. And if we're gonna crack the whip on the serve, we've gotta create elasticity and keep things loose, all right? The arm is a conduit, right? It's a conduit to, to really transfer this energy out to the racket and to the ball. And so the important thing here is like, first we wanna find a cadence, right? So as I'm moving, I really wanna feel this happening loosely, right? So as my, my weight is forward and I shift back, there's a slight pause as I come back to my front foot. All right, so this is gonna be kind of step one here. We're gonna work from that front foot to the back foot, and as I come back forward, there's gonna be a pause. All right, so this is the tricky part. A lot of you have this, all right? And this is where things end up getting stiff. This is where we enter rackets, oh, excuse me, waiter's tray, right, from here. I know, it's probably you. There's a lot. I would say that probably 50% of my students that I work with, that is the culprit, all right? And it's either a grip error, they're not continental, right? Or the racket path is kind of funky or they're just getting too much tension, right? And so from here, we don't want it to be a stick to where all of a sudden I'm going back this way or I'm simply going through this motion and I'm cheating to where from now I'm letting the racket just kind of fall back but I'm still pushing through it. And that becomes darts, right? So one of the most controlled sports in the world is dart from the, darts from the elbow. I'm really working towards a target. The serve couldn't be more different, all right? This is one of the most dynamic, if not the most dynamic movement in all of sports. Pitching has six moving, moving parts. The serve has eight, all right? But so without boring you with a bunch of sports science, big words that I can barely pronounce and that you may barely understand, I'm gonna show you a little something, something that you can make at home that's gonna help you understand the way this kinetic chain works for better mechanics and then finally have the ability to crack the whip. I've got here a very cheap, simple tool that I use all the time with our academy kids and the adults. It's one of my favorite tools, no need to spend a lot of money. All you're gonna need is two, three, heck even four tennis balls and some, some stockings, some pantyhose, okay? Something that's nice and stretchy, all right? Because now we've got our whip. We're gonna practice this service motion by using this. And what I want, I wanna have enough length, but not too much that it's hitting the ground. And I wanna go through my motion here. And what you're gonna find is that if done correctly, it's gonna be hard to enter this waiter's tray. You see there, where my arm is suddenly leading forward and the, 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 the whip really isn't building up the momentum. All right, so we have two ways that we can do this. We have kind of what we see more of the traditional, right? But this, this is a little bit more advanced. And from here, what's happening is I go through the motion, I'm getting into trophy position and I'm allowing the weight of the whip because of the weight of the tennis balls to fall. You can see there, I can't control it. I've just got to make sure that I get into trophy position and then it falls, okay? That's the, that's the first way of doing it. The other way of doing it is what we see Federer do. All right? And I, I like this one because I think, especially for you um, intermediates still kind of figuring things out, you advanced players may go ahead and jump into that. Um, but, but this is a little bit easier. And, I, and to be honest, this, this actually worked for me a little bit as far as improving kind of the cadence of my serve. Um, and what I'm doing here is instead of going back into trophy stance, I'm gonna actually move the arm here and then I'm gonna swing it back up, all right? So similar, but very different the way that the whip is moving. So Federer is here, all right? He's actually swinging it back around this way and then up, okay? So now we have the next step. We have two ways of doing it. Get out there and practice. It's personal preference. They both work just fine. It's up to you. Now here's the big piece that a lot of us are missing. How do we get this thing moving once it's down our back, 
right? I don't want to have it feel as if I'm using my arm to raise up, okay? I want to feel almost like it's a shot put, okay? And from a shot put, I'm using my chest and my upper body to get this thing moving. But notice what I did with my feet there, right? You've never seen somebody use a shot put and not move their feet or load their lower body. It's never this, right? From a shot put, my feet are loaded and I'm pushing. So here's the part on the serve that a lot of you are missing from the racket drop. We got the racket drop figured out. Now, how do we get that thing moving with high acceleration? As I go through it and the racket drops, I've got to power up to get that moving up and out and cracking the whip. All right, so if I go fed method there, I want a little bit more traditional than the other one. If I go fed method and I work this way from here, I'm really powering up with the feet, all right? And I can't control the weight. This is the beauty of this, right? If you have mechanics and bad muscle memory, as long as you're working through this, it's gonna be really hard to control the whip, all right? It's gonna start working with that big snap that you're looking for. All right, time to grab the rackets. Let's jump into the next progression. All right, now we've got the racket and we want to start putting this into action. And what we want to feel first, just something very simple. Let's go ahead and get, and this is assuming you've got your continental grip, right? If you don't have your continental grip, this is going to be really difficult. Continental grip in trophy position. And what I want you to feel is just the racket bounce. All right, let it drop and bounce to your back. All right, this is step one, all right? And assuming we feel this, the rest of the magic can happen and we can start hitting the big power, big spin on the serve. All right, step two now is the racket drops, I'm gonna rotate, okay? So I let the racket bounce and then I rotate as if I'm throwing, all right? And from here, this is where we see the flip of the racket, all right? But the reason it's gonna flip is because I'm gonna use my feet through the floor, pushing through the ground, the ground isn't gonna give, so I'm gonna build a lot of energy from the ground up, my back leg fires to my back hip and it fires this shot put, all right? So I bounce the racket here, all right? I turn and I power up, all right? One more time, I go bounce, bounce, turn and power up. And you can see the back heel up off the ground, all right? It's time to hit some serves now. All right, really make sure that you're taking notice here of how loose everything is, all right? Barely holding on to the racket. In another video, we talked about how three fingers will do the job. You don't need tension here. The racket has to have the ability to move freely. All right, and from here, we'll slow things down. I want you to watch the racket drop and how it correlates with the push up off the ground firing the hip. All right, so those are a little bit more traditional. Um, I'll show you now what I'm talking about with the Federer swing path. Some of you out here, some of you out there, <laughs> you're not here, I wish you were. It'd be such a good lesson. But some of you out there, what you're having issues with is when you get here, you're having a hard time finding this turn, right? And therefore keeping the racket in the correct position to get here. From here, all of a sudden the racket gets lost and this is where we get the waiter tray. So what the, the path that Federer does, what it fixes is instead of going up, when you get here, you're gonna flick back up this way. I'll show you that to you now. So guys, the chief difference here is as I work the racket back, instead of going up, as I raise my arm, I'm gonna work the racket back towards my head. Or I'm gonna use this on a kick serve because it seems, for me, that's, that's really where I'm finding a huge improvement.
All right, guys, get out there, work through these progressions. Remember the rocket drop, getting the rocket through extension and then powering up from the ground up and really getting that arm firing, using that conduit to just exchange a ton of power. It's really what cracking the whip's all about. That's how we get the big power serve or the big heavy kick. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's instruction. I know it's, it's difficult subject matter. It's been translated a thousand different ways. Hopefully with that one simple drill, it, it starts making sense. Get out there and practice it. For just a couple bucks, you can go buy stockings. You don't have to be ten, new tennis balls. Use your old tennis balls, all right? And then you'll start finding these mechanics on your own. You'll start feeling it because that's what it's all about, right? You can see it, you can hear it, but you have to feel it. All right, guys, if you liked today's video, please hit the like button. If you loved it, hit subscribe. That way you don't ever miss another video. All right, and if you're curious about the platform, we have a link below. Super awesome stuff there, 10,000 plus members now. So you can pair up with somebody in your community at your level, get out there, play a challenge match, and get your own ranking. Check it out. We'll see you here at Player Court next time around.